Hi, I'm John Geckler for the Gibbs Singleton Museum of Fine Art in Santa Fe, New Mexico. And today I want to take a look at one of Gibbs' pieces called The Scout. It is a historical piece, it's a hero piece, it's a Native American piece, and it's a Lone Rider piece. All those kinds of things that Gibb loved. Native Americans had fought as volunteers and allies with white American forces going back to colonial times. The U.S. Congress decided they actually wanted to draft Native Scouts into the U.S. Army. And the reason was that after the Civil War, the Army came back west and was charged with pacifying the West. Well, they were coming from a war that was based on maneuver and large units and artillery and all sorts of things, and suddenly they found themselves in an environment of hit and run, which was how things were fought on the frontier, and they didn't know how to play at that level. And the Natives were kicking their butts. So what they did was say, all right, we will recruit guys who know how to fight that way. They authorized a thousand, they offered him 40 cents a day, how generous, and for that they had to provide their own horse and tack. The army would provide their guns and their ammunition and their food and fodder. So they recruited these guys and immediately there was a shift because what the scouts brought them was they brought them intelligence gathering, which had never existed before. They brought them guys who could track, they brought them guys who could interpret sign, and they could tell you how many enemies had passed and how long ago it was and which direction they were heading. They could predict the weather from the winds and the clouds. And a lot of times they could anticipate where they were likely to end up in battle. If I could put myself in your shoes, where would I meet you on the battlefield? And all of a sudden the army starts winning these encounters because these scouts brought them additional capabilities. The other thing that they brought them was a fighting capacity that the army wasn't really used to. These guys were fearless skirmishers and they were ferocious assault troops. A lot of times the scouts led the charge. The reason was much of the time they were fighting their traditional enemies. This particular guy is an Apache, and the Apaches were very prolific in the U.S. Army as scouts because they were great warriors, and they also were able to fight their traditional enemies, the Comanche, and the Comanche Wars went later than most of the rest of the wars, the Indian Wars. So this guy is later, you can tell for a couple of reasons. One, he's wearing U.S. Cavalry Regulation uniform, and two, he's riding a U.S. Cavalry horse. I said originally they were required to provide their own horses for 40 cents a day, horses and tack. But later on, when Congress realized these guys are valuable and the Army said, hey, we, you know, we need to take better care of them, then they evolved into that kind of gear. Now, before they did that, before they started wearing regulation uniforms, one of the things that was an issue was they often fought in traditional clothes. So you might find a guy who's basically wearing just buckskins or breech clout and boots, Sometimes they couldn't tell the enemies from their own scouts. So the army finally figured out that what they needed to do was issue a ration of red cloth. And the scouts would wear that red cloth as a sash or as a headscarf or as a bandana. And if you saw somebody out there fighting in a red outfit in, with red, as you see with his headband, don't shoot him, he's our guy. When we talk about it, Apache scouts, one of the things to know is that Geronimo actually signed up at age 63 to be a scout. He'd been incarcerated in Fort Sill, Oklahoma for a long time, ever since he led his people out of the White Mountains and into captivity, lest they be exterminated. He'd had a vision that showed them going east on an iron horse, and that, so he persuaded his people to go into that captivity. But he signed up at age 63 to be a scout because it got him back out into the landscapes and the lifestyles that he loved. Gibb always loved people who were living out on the edge. And the scouts are totally emblematic of that. These guys were out front, often by themselves, and they were the first to make contact with the enemy. That takes a special kind of person. In fact, one of the things that's interesting is that they were authorized to use an emblem of cross arrows. That was later adopted by the United States Special Forces because of that proud fighting tradition. The best of the best. Again, think about what it's like to be able to say every day, Gibbs said, I'm right with my God and it's a good day to die. That's a special way of being in the world. And that's who these guys were.
The Scouts lived their life completely on their terms, with total abandon, and Gibb lived his life the same way. I think that's why he appreciated him so much. Thanks for tuning in. I'm John Geckler for the Gibb Singleton Museum.